This website here is a web portfolio that I put together for one of my alter egos. There's a tutorial for this web portfolio on my channel. I think it looks pretty nifty and it gets the job done. At least that's what I did think until my self-confidence was completely shattered into oblivion the other day when I chanced upon a LinkedIn post that had 10 or so inspiring S tier web developer portfolios that were absolutely ridiculous. I was totally humbled. And so in today's video, we're going to investigate a bunch of them, see if we can learn anything and ultimately just have our minds absolutely blown by how talented some of these people are. As always, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to smash the like and subscribe buttons. And if you like the video, we can do some more. But anyway, let's get into it. Starting off with portfolio number one by Dennis Snellenberg. I guess that's how you pronounce it. If we reload that page, we see that we get an awesome little loading UI to start off. If we reload my web page, we can see that we have a lagging image and some text pop up. So I think Dennis takes the cake on that one. It's actually a very effective little landing page. Obviously we can scroll further, but just even from this, I know exactly what he does. I know where he's located. And one thing I absolutely love about this web page is how interactive all of these little navigation elements are. I just think that's super clean as opposed to, you know, just changing colors and having something very static. Apparently, I did my research, Dennis is the master of animation. So I would expect that we're going to be absolutely blown away by animation on this web page. We can already see the parallax effect and the text follows the scroll direction. Or better said, it changes direction depending on which way I'm scrolling. We get a nice little menu icon, obviously, as you know, I guess is just expected when you hover over it, it follows your cursor around and we get nice little hover effects uh, with the color change. This layout here, I think is super clean, kind of reminds me of going to a museum, how they have very like minimalist sparse information, but it feels very, it feels very top of the line and prestigious almost. Dude clearly has a passion for design code and interaction. He's even taken the time to change the highlighting color of the text on the screen, which is a nice little effect. I think it balances well. It's probably just that color right there, I'd say. So we know what he does. Now we get to look at, wow, that is ridiculous. Honestly, look at this. You know, you, you scroll away, you scroll to it. Even the highlighted text has a loading animation. That is actually unreal. Like no one would even notice that yet. Yeah, he's just taken the time to incorporate that. So that is ridiculous. Now, obviously we have some of his projects pretty, once again, minimalist. I like it, but if we hover, you know, we get this cool little pop-up showing up. It even, uh, scrolls throughout the projects as we hover over a different project. Once again, looks super clean, lots more buttons. We can go through to his work. I'm not going to do that just yet. Let's keep coming. We've got a nice little scrolling section of horizontal scroll of all his projects. As you'd expect, they all look mega clean. Props to this dude. And then he obviously feels confident enough to acquire some work. So he is straight to the point, get in touch. He's got his contact information. And once again, it just looks super clean. You can't see them, but in the bottom right hand corner, we have his socials. We've got his local time. Nice little touch. If we hit get in touch, this contact form is possibly my favorite contact form that I've come across in a long time. We've got his important information across the side. Once again, everything follows my cursor. Really curious to figure out how he does that. If you would like to know as well, I could potentially make a video on it. Leave a comment down below and let me know if you'd be interested in that. But yeah, I really like this input form. I think it's super slick. You know, it does the job and then we are enticed with these massive buttons. So you literally just can't help but click it. Uh, if we come to some of his navigation links, we look at his work, we can, we obviously just get a pretty simplified version of what we saw earlier. But it's nice that we can go ahead and, you know, toggle the view style. So if we wanted to view them in this form, we can as well. Once again, I think it's just insanely clean. If we compare it to mine, you know, it's just, this is good. You know, this might take two hours to put together and it serves a purpose, so you can't complain. However, this geezer right here has just uh, set the bar pretty high for the rest of the portfolios, to be honest. I would absolutely employ him. I am pretty stunned by this. And I would like to figure out how he does some of the stuff so I can incorporate it into my own websites. 
Once again, really nice job with the parallax on all of the images. We see what he does, it all looks super clean. Obviously he's got some awards and stuff. And if we just have a look at the menu, obviously that looks sick too. So off to a strong start. Dennis, I'm gonna give this a solid 10 out of 10. I am just absolutely blown away. Let me know what you guys think. And if your portfolio stands up against this one, I would love to see it. Leave a comment down below. On to portfolio number two, we have Tammy. Let's see if we get any reload effects. Nope, Tammy is straight to the point. Once again, this is pretty clean. It's not as animated as the last one, but there's something to be said for simplicity almost. Not that this is even that simplest. I enjoy this transitioning text. I think it's a great way to have a lot of information about the person without taking up a lot of space. Pretty clean UI and layout. Straight to the projects, which I think are probably images. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Design an image, have it look good on a page, and then you don't have to do it in HTML and CSS. And we're straight to the bottom, straight to the point. Let's click on some of the other sublinks. We've got some really nice presentation here. I really enjoy the black and white, the fonts that she's chosen. This is a really nice UI layout. I would honestly copy this uh, as opposed to doing something like I've done right here. I think that this is the upgrade, clearly. Once again, we're just repeating that layout. So it's pretty straight to the point. I actually quite like this little text at the bottom. It really speaks to the user. They do some freelancing. It looks like it's just the same thing. Let's have a look at fun. Wow, that was a lot of chaos. We've got some image layouts. So I guess you just have to kind of click on them and explore. Articles, same thing again about, we've got some information about her. Nice little page. Yeah, first place in UX results, understandably, this is a really nice user experience. It's straight to the point. Finally, we can open up her resume. This is actually, I mean, I know this isn't a resume review video, but this is actually a really sleek resume. If you ever wanted to go against the standard resume template, which I've linked in my roadmap, this would be an alternative that I would absolutely recommend people go for. It's but against the grain and not everyone has it, but it's still super straight to the point and looks extremely clean. Anyway, it looks like that's pretty much Tammy's whole website. I still think I prefer Dennis's, but there's a lot to be said for this. And this looks like it's way more feasible to program in a tutorial that we could potentially have on the channel. Onwards and upwards onto number three. That was a pretty intense on mount effect. Let's actually just watch that once more. Refresh the page, we get a nice little load screen. There's obviously a lot going on, so fair enough. And then we come in and we actually don't get a lot of information outside of finding out that this is obviously the work. On scrolling, I find that I don't have any vertical scroll and it's obviously just through the projects. The image parallax, once again, it looks super sleek. So I guess you just have to pick one that looks kind of curious. I actually think it's a bit of a letdown because I wouldn't mind even having like a text blurb down the bottom kind of telling me what, what each one is. This is more like if you have the leisure to explore portfolios, then go for, but if you're trying to be pragmatic and straight to the point, could be a disadvantage, who am I to say, but you know, these are just my thoughts. If we click on one, we uh, get taken to a, the bigger picture. So we get to see it in full. If I scroll, it takes me back, but if I click on it again, then it takes me down to the actual project. Looks super clean here, I really like this. This is almost the information I wish that was somewhere on the first page. Uh, favorite thing about this website so far is this little side scroll bar on the side that just shows us where in the context of the entire page that we are. And equally the scroll bar that progressively goes down the side I think is super cool. Then we can just go straight onto the next website. So this whole thing is clearly meant to be experienced just by going on the first one, clicking on it, and then literally just going for a scroll through their entire, you know, project section. So, you know, fair play to Camille. Obviously it looks phenomenal. It is very sleek, very modern, unique user interface, which I really think is great. And you know, it's kind of like going to a museum where you're taking the time to peruse and maybe it's not about getting the information in the first two seconds. 
if we come to the about, we get a, once again, a repeat of that effect just there. This uh, scroll effect is just really nice and I love the way that it progressively loads onto the page. Just looks really sleek. Overall, really good website. For me, this comes in at number two, I think, second favorite of the ones we've seen so far. On to Matt's portfolio. This one is lots of contrast, black and white. That's pretty intense. You can't see it, but in the bottom hand corner, we can swap between a black and white and an RGB user interface. I actually think I prefer the black and white in this particular instance, but everyone has a preference. And obviously all these links are in the description down below. So if you want to go and experience them for yourselves, be sure to check them out. Coolest thing about this website is absolutely this noun selection here. So basically what it is, if we hover over a noun, it selects a word and we can change the word that is displayed there. So Matt has obviously come up with a whole lot of uh, sentences that work together where essentially these words can be interchanged and the context of the sentence still makes sense. So I think that's a really great way to engage user interactivity and you know like he's conveying a lot of information in just this one sentence. If we scroll down we get some crazy font over here. It's pretty artistic, it's not necessarily to my taste and I think that the black and white is mega strong and the uh, amount of black space here is pretty intense but you know that might be to some people's preference. We have a pretty nice little table just here. I think if we click on these, some of them it looks like we get more information, some of them it looks like we don't. I guess that's just the external link, if it exists. If we keep coming down, it's more of the same stuff. If we take a look at strategies, looks like it's just more tables. Apparently lots more tables. Dude likes his essays. Great thing to practice if you have the time. We can see his services. I would say the only thing that really appears to be missing is uh, what the intention of the website is. We've obviously got some of his awards, some of his recent clients, but like, I guess he does copy. I'm not really, if we come into services, I guess he does all of this stuff. I, you know, looks like maybe it's just copywriting for the predominantly, but once again, overall, a pretty cool website contact form just there I guess that's how we get in touch this one for me is probably coming in at the bottom of the pile so far obviously it still looks phenomenal this is a really cool effect but yeah it hasn't quite grasped me as much as the other ones onwards and upwards we have Chris Welsh this one I I like the minimalist the white space that we have here and, you know, I almost don't even mind just being greeted with a paragraph uh, that explains exactly what this dude does. If we scroll down, we have uh, a bit of an alternative navigation link system. Personally, would have these horizontal, but that's just like a super fanatic critique that I don't think is relevant. We get straight to some of his work, which is a lot of... Uh, videos it appears straight into the thick of it small text but lots of visualization which once again it kind of like going to a museum where it's just like visual communication you know a picture is worth a thousand words so why would you not dude has clearly worked on a bit that's all of his work I guess so what if we go to about if we come to about it looks like it keeps the paragraph it just swaps out the bottom stuff this is a super programmable website. We could very easily make this. I don't think that it's uh, that complicated at all. Be curious to know where you guys rank this one in the list of ones that we've seen for, so far. And if you would like a tutorial for it as well, this would be pretty easy to put together. Five down, two to go. Next up we have Axel, a Dutch freelance designer. Uh, initially, this color scheme I feel like is an acquired taste uh, I don't mind it but it's not like I love vibrancy and colors as you can probably tell and this is you know pretty understated uh, I like the little red dots though and it's you know 
in a lot of ways you can respect the low contrast. This is a pretty cool effect. You actually can't see it because my head is there. But as we hover over a project, we get a uh, little visualization of what that project might actually look like. If we keep going, we can see some of the uh, positions that this guy has held. Obviously as a freelancer, you have a lot of different positions. Some big clients stated right there. Uh, not a big fan of having the scroll to top button in such a prominent location, but you know, once again, super minor critique. And then because he is a freelancer, the man is trying to convert. So here we have uh, his conversion, I guess. Pretty random that he's scrolling the exact same text, but once again, great website, super minor critique. And I guess that's just about it really. So it's not a huge website. Once again, this one is, this is a more complicated effect by all means, but I don't think it would be impossible to code at all. This stuff would be pretty easy. Obviously it's extremely impressive. This one hasn't knocked my socks off as much as some of the others, but yeah, once again, let me know what you think of this portfolio down in the comments. The similarities that we're kind of seeing between a few of them is the uh, text is obviously trending. Big paragraphs. Anyway, last but not least, we have Rob, Robonilla, or Robonilla, depending on if you're Spanish or not. This website has completely hijacked my scroll bar, so now we are horizontally scrolling. I think it's pretty cool the way the projects change depending on the scroll location. This amount of information is kind of what I was looking for in that earlier example where we were scrolling through the pictures, just so I know exactly what I'm clicking on. I like the subtle R and B in the back. I think that's pretty sleek. Once again, all of these have a very museum feel. It feels very like modern and artistic or like an art gallery, I guess. If we scroll through all the projects to the end, we, uh, I guess explode this little recording dot in the corner, which is pretty cool. It's the recording dot for a filmmaker. So that's a nice little menu icon. And if we come down here, I'm actually, I don't like the color red, but you know, I think that the contrast here works and I think that it's pretty neat. If we go ahead and click on a video, it just comes up in a view screen and we can obviously play the video, pause it, so on and so forth, uh, and close out of it. So for a filmmaker's portfolio, I think that it is mega sleek. I think that it feels extremely unique. It's pretty straight to the point. You just see the work and then we've got some information on how to get hold of the dude. So on the whole, all of these are shockingly good. These people have so much talent, it is hard to comprehend. And I think that we're really gonna have to up the ante on some of the portfolios that we put up on the YouTube, I think. Definitely think my favorite one is still uh, Dennis's. It is so, this dude must have put like 100 hours at least into designing this. This is crazy. It's just so sleek and subtle and there are so many elements that I just think look phenomenal. But yeah, that's pretty much the whole video of seeing all of these capable designers and amazing pieces of work has humbled you. Leave a comment down below. Let me know which is your favorite. There's a few more on the list that we could go through and explore. So if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments down below. And also let me know if your portfolio stacked up against them. I'd love to see your portfolios and maybe we could take a look at them too. Anyway, thank you guys for watching the video and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Learning to code? If so, be sure to check out the Small James Web Development Roadmap. Link is in the description down below or dive straight in with these videos.